My son's name is Dennis Dale Click, July 21st, 1986. Uh, a busy boy, a great kid, a lot of energy, beautiful smile. He loves sports, loves sports. Football was his number one thing. The first, when he played football, uh, he got tackled and, you know, they pulled him off. He just loved it. He was sad that they pulled him off, but the coaches were great. That kid never got pulled off the field again. He just loved football. He played an instrument and he did great. He, he loved it. He put all of his energy into it and just smiled. I would pick him up from school and we'd go to Baskin and Robbins and we would get ice cream cones and just talk and have fun. When I would take him to school, um, I would go to drop him off and while we were in the car he'd say, Mom, now don't, don't kiss me. You can tell me goodbye, but don't kiss me. They were each other's best friend. And if they had mutual friends like brothers and sisters, and if one of them talked bad about the sister, boy, the uh, Dennis would defend his sister right and left, but in front of mom and dad, boy, she's mean. <laughs> I think one of the one of the most treasured moments was in the summer. The kids were always good about just playing, riding their bikes, and we'd bought a swimming pool and filled it up with water. And uh, you know, they were just splashing around with friends and having a good time. And his dad had gone hunting and had you know, big horns that he had gotten. And Dennis just went over and, you know, proudly held those horns up. And he was just so proud of his dad and just was having a good time. Um, Samantha Serene Simmer. And she was born on 9-11, um, 1983. Um, she, uh, she was just a fantastic girl. Um, from from the time she was a little kid to up to her graduation, she's just extraordinary. Um, she knew she loved animals, and she just wrote, learned to ride horses when she was really little. She learned how to play music. Um, she had like five different instruments that she could play, including the piano. Uh, she worked at a pet store when she was in high school, um, gave horse lessons on the side to try to earn money. Just, she, she just, she was just fantastic. She just had a very um, unique personality. She was always a joker. She just, uh, uh, she would, she would be very serious, but at the same time, she'd be joking about it. And you had to really catch it in her personality to understand that she's just joking. <laughs> um, she just knew how to do that. She knew, she just loved it, people and animals. She just, she was just always so giving and um, laughing. God, her laugh, she had the most unique laugh. Um, she just, we would go, she learned how to ride when she was just a baby. I used to uh, carry her in my front pack and the backpack on the horse. And as she grew, she learned to ride. Um, she would do vaulting. When she got old enough, um, vaulting is like gymnastics on horses and where the horse would be running in a circle and she would run along with it and jump up on it and stand on it while it was loping and she just she oh she was just amazing um we would go camping hiking um snow we learned how to snowboard together uh she she was a fantastic snowboarder uh we'd race each other down the hill but i never wanted to take the air she'd always take the jumps and i'd just stay to the side I didn't want to hurt myself. Uh, she could, she would take the air and 
and uh, land on her feet. Uh, she, she loved uh, hiking, was one of her favorites, horseback riding, like I said, and um, she was learning windsurfing. She was just starting to learn windsurfing. She's very adventurous. Their dad is a firefighter and he had to work that day, so it was just the kids and I in the vehicle. Of course, getting into the car, it was always a flip of the coin who got to sit in the front seat with mom. And Dan got to sit in the front with me and Dennis behind me. And just driving down I-82, we went to pass a semi-truck and of course, way back then, you always did the honk honk at the semi truck that you were driving by. And that's what the kids and I were doing. And as we turned this curve in the road, we impacted the man on the wrong side of the interstate. March 27th, 1997, I-82, mile marker 111. I really don't have any memory of the day um, from what people have told me. Uh, we had family that were in town that we talked to them on the phone. Uh, went to Fred Meyer and got whatever groceries needed. Went to church that morning. She died on August 12, 2006. Um, we had just we had taken a mom-daughter trip to the beach because she had just graduated from Western University. She graduated with honors. She had uh, a degree in linguistics, and I think I think she had five different languages under her belt too, along with all that music that she knew. And um, she was going. She got accepted into the Peace Corps. She was getting ready to go to Morocco and Mongolia for a few years. And so we decided to take a trip to the beach with her sister and her stepsister and uh, my grandboys. And we all went to Cannon Beach and spent three days there having a great time. And when we got home that day, we left on Sunday. And I remember driving home and we Got home about four in the afternoon. It was a beautiful, sunny day, beautiful, bright blue skies. And she wanted to run to the pet store that she was working at to turn in some sand dollars that she found on the beach that morning and asked to borrow my car. So I said, yeah, and I said, we're gonna have dinner in a few minutes, you know, in about an hour, so come back. And she goes, well, I'll be back. She's going to bring her boyfriend back and have dinner with us. And I went out to the um, pasture to change the sprinklers. And was out there doing that when my dad and my husband came down and flagged me and said, Linda, come on, we got to go. We just got a phone call. Sammy's been in an accident. So we got in the car. We drove past that intersection up there. and. I saw the car and I just, um, I, at first I was like, is that our car? Because it was smashed. And we drove past it and they took me to the hospital and she was in, in, she was in emergency intensive care. They were trying to revive her and they uh, came and got me and brought me back there when they were trying, they had that trying to get her heart going and I walked up and uh, grabbed her feet at the end of that bed and I just held those feet and prayed and I just couldn't believe that she was on that table like that and and she was and that she died and I know I wouldn't see her again I it was just so shocking it was I didn't I was in a lot of shock. I didn't. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I just stood there and held those feet. And 
they just they they just all let me stand there. I think I stood there for an hour, so nobody nobody made me leave. And uh, I just I didn't understand at the time what had happened until afterwards that it was a drunk driver that killed her, and I didn't know. Because I, I just figured her, she just got in an accident. I didn't realize it was drunk driver ran a red light and killed her. And so when I did find that out, I was like in the middle of the day on a beautiful <laughs> sunny day. Is that even possible? Um, yeah, it, that was that last day. We hit head on, obviously not remembering anything, but hit head on, uh, front to front. Our cars were destroyed. The kids were ejected from the vehicle. There was a man that we had heard who was coming from Prosser that had followed this wrong-sided driver the whole way and he's trying to call the police. Of course, cell phones back then were going more to the Prosser police. At this time, a state patrol or a county sheriff saw the wrong car, the car on the wrong side of the interstate. He ended up calling an ambulance before we even hit. He just knew that it was coming and they uh, took care of the kids who were badly injured and I was trapped inside of our vehicle upside down, them thinking that I was just going to drown in my own blood. My daughter Danielle, her brain stem was torn, she broke her jaw, she had road rash everywhere that her body hit the pavement. Her lips were just tore to pieces. She had braces, um, just bleeding and badly injured. She was life flighted over to Mary Bridges Pediatric Trauma Center in Tacoma the day of that accident. Well, I had not been conscious for a long time and my parents were over in Seattle seeing my daughter, Dan, and my brother called and told him that Sharon was conscious. And so my parents came home or came to the hospital and my dad said that we were in a bad wreck and that Danielle was badly injured and Dennis was dead. And all I did was just pat him softly on the cheek. I didn't really know or understand what he was telling me. We had been at Good Sam's in Puyallup for three months and my focus was more on just healing and everything that I had to do for my rehab. But by the time we got home and looking at my daughter every day and an empty room, it was just horrible. He was 10 years old. She was gonna do something. So I just, even to this day, I just don't understand why somebody with that much purpose had to go. You know, why not me? I'm not doing anything special. She was going to be doing something special. I think I would just tell him that I loved him and give him a kiss and probably never let go. Oh, I would 
put her in the camper with me and take her up to the mountains and go with our horses and go fishing. I would take her on the Pacific Crest Trail and spend an entire six months doing that trail with her. That's what I would do. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again.